Good morning, everyone. I'm reading today from Mark 11, verse 22, 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have the faith of God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So what can we say about the astonishing statements we've just read? Firstly, these are the words of Jesus, the Son of God. He meant every word he spoke here. Secondly, these are promises recorded in Scripture, the written word of God. And none of God's words will fall to the ground. All the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. God says what he means, and he means what he says. Thirdly, we might observe that the that casting a mountain into the sea is an extreme situation. Do such extreme circumstances happen very often? Perhaps Jesus is telling us that none of us will need such extraordinary faith every day, but only now and again. And fourthly, Jesus said any believer can experience what he is saying. We don't have to be someone great, an apostle, a prophet, a big preacher, or evangelist, or someone with a big ministry, etc., etc. Jesus said, whoever says to this mountain, whoever doesn't doubt in his heart, whoever believes. So what is the key here? I believe the key is not so much trying to get faith or convince ourselves that because Jesus said this, we already have this sort of faith or anything else which puts the onus on ourselves. I think Jesus is teaching us that if we are confronted with a mountain and it is God's will that it should be moved, we will be able to move it. We won't doubt in our hearts, but we will believe God about it. In other words, this faith is a gift from the Holy Spirit at the time it is needed. It seems to me the key is hearing God, so that in any situation, we will know whether or not we should move the perceived mountain that is in front of us. So we need, as Les would say, a closer walk with God. For example, in Acts 14, 8 to 10, Paul is preaching. In the meeting, there is a man who has been a cripple from birth. It says that Paul perceived that the man had faith to be healed. How could Paul possibly know this? The Holy Spirit must have revealed it to him. At that moment, the Holy Spirit gave Paul faith. He didn't doubt. In a loud voice, he said to the man, stand up straight on your feet. And the man leapt and walked. Paul removed that mountain, just as Jesus described it would happen. 1 Kings 18 tells us the dramatic story of Elijah's confrontation with the prophets of Baal. We all know the details. Elijah is going to ask God to send fire from heaven in order to persuade the Israelites that the Lord is God. As he comes to pray, Elijah says, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and what I, I have, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. Amazing. The, the story is not so much demonstrating that Elijah had extraordinary faith, but that had he, he had an extraordinary walk with God. He heard God. He knew the voice of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When God speaks, he gives the faith for the situation he speaks about. So, today, we thank God for all we have known up until now. But let us press on for a closer walk with God, which will not only benefit ourselves, but will make us more useful to God, and therefore a greater blessing to others. Amen. Have a lovely day.